Welcome to the Rim Podcast, episode 38. This is the podcast that we bring the candidates to the show in every, almost each and every district. And today we have a really great special guest uh, from District 35. He's running for House Representative, and his name is Ken Davenport. Welcome to the show, sir. Thanks. Thanks for having me. I really yes. appreciate this. My first question before we actually get to the studio and put you in the hot yellow chair, <laughs> you said you knocked out 1,700 doors within the last, what, couple months? Uh, about, uh, about a month, month and a half, uh, give or take a week. Nice. Yeah, it's I've a hard been, work. It is. It is. I'm out there every day. I, um, I'm just zooming along. I get my golf cart, and I'm driving. I can go about 20 miles away from my <laughs> house, and I'm just knocking on doors. I'm meeting some beautiful, great people. And my, it's, before it's I amazing. jump to the questions, what is the biggest issues and the, 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 the concerns, the feedbacks that you're getting most of it out of these people? You know, the, everybody is upset right now about the entire government. Okay. They're, they're so upset about how, uh, you know, I vote for this guy and I never see him again. I hear about how, look at the economy, look at my, uh, the retired people. They're, they're living on fixed incomes. And all of a sudden, they're work worried about their fixed income supporting them going forward because all this inflation that's hit us so hard so quickly. Okay. They're very upset. Nice. And you said uh, you have uh, two kids, right? I have three. Three kids. Yes. Okay. And a wife. And a wife. And yes. uh, you guys, I mean, it's a hard work. You decide, why do you, why do you decide to run? What was the reason? Well, it started uh, uh, two years or so ago when my oldest daughter actually was bullied by a teacher. Okay. Uh, we went and my wife started advocating in the school board and then uh, the mandates came out. We're both flight attendants. We almost almost thought we were going to lose our jobs. Yes. And you know, it, it was a crazy situation that my life was going to be turned upside down. And I went to the representatives. I went to both sides and neither one of them cared in my district. Then I called the uh, Chris Sproles, the, the, his office, the Speaker of the House, mm -hmm. nobody returned a call, nobody cared. And I felt like, here I am, I'm a constituent. This is where people in Florida are going to lose jobs because of these illegal mandates. Why are they not caring about us? And that, that got me fired up. And my wife and I, we sat and we talked about it, and we're like, you know what? Let's do it. And the kids are behind it. My little eight-year-old... She's so amazing. She's behind. <laughs> oh, she did. She came up to me and she's like, A big support. <laughs> Daddy, you're working so hard. And if you lose, I'm going to cry. Is that actually every morning when you wake up, is that movie and there are a lot of kids saying, You know what? Uh, that gives you biggest motivation, right? They are. They are. Every day, uh, we actually, um, uh, with my health history from last year, uh, we changed around our sleeping. So we co sleep with them in two big nice, beds in nice, one room. Nice. And, you know, right now they're under nine, all of them. And they want to be with us. Yes. So until they Connection. grow up and they, they want to be, it's, it's about holding them and hugging That's them it. That's every day. It. Supporting them. Supporting. Family, family for me it's a matter. is a, oh, yeah, more than anything else. I get through everything <laughs> because of them. I believe you. So, my man in the District 35, you're knocking each and every day on the door. Yes, what I am. the What the citizen of District 35 looking from the government moving forward? So what I'm getting from everybody is that um, they want to have less government. Okay. They don't want the government mandating them to do this. They don't want to be told what to do in their house. The government should not be in their house telling them what to do. They should be uh, respecting the uh, choices that they want to make. If the government wants to give them some sort of statistics that they can make their own informed decisions, that's what people want. This, this where, where we're shutting down businesses, we're making people stay at home, telling people that they can't go to Thanksgiving yeah. and be with their families. You know, and, and these are during the worst times of the year. You've got depression that spikes during this, this time of the year because of the weather. And now we're telling people not to be together. No, that, so that is unacceptable. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's what they're asking for. Another question everybody talk about Second Amendment. And what does Second Amendment can do for the Floridians and the people in your District 35? Well, and what you going to do for them once you get elected in State House? I, I graduated from UCF okay. with, with a criminal justice okay. degree. Okay. I worked several years in law enforcement as a probation officer. Okay. And the one I can, thing I can tell you is <laughs> criminals don't give up their guns. No, they don't. <laughs> so when we talk about doing away with the Second Amendment, 
why aren't we looking at countries like Venezuela, mm -hmm. Cuba, Australia? Look at the chaos that has been created and how the people have lost their rights because criminals now can attack them and they, can, they don't have any rights. The government is demanding them do things that they, they should not be able to do. Um, and, and the Second Amendment, it, it, it calls for a free state. It, it, Florida is free. We yes. want to keep Florida free. And I have a constitutional right to bear my, my arms. And no one should be able to take that away. Constitutional carry has failed in legislation yes, I see. three years in a row. And we have a Republican-held House and Senate. There's no reason that should have failed. I personally, 30 years ago, when I was doing construction, while I was in college, I was up in Jacksonville. And we were outside of our hotel room, me and two other buddies uh, from high school. And we're cooking on the rotisserie mm -hmm. outside our hotel room. I have two guys come up and put a gun in my face. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I got held up at gunpoint. I'm on the, we ended up in the, in the hotel room 45 minutes on the floor, not knowing if we're going to die. Three hours later, the cops show up, of course. And what, what, what would have happened if constitutional carry would have been there? We had guns in the car, yeah. but my gun on my hip, my gun on my other two buddies' hip, you can't tell me that two guys with one little over-under Derringer would have walked up not on the two of uh, three of us with 9 millimeters and 45s. Knowing now that you are protected. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and the Second Amendment is huge to Florida. Okay. Because we want to protect our families, our houses, we want to stand our ground. We don't want to have someone hurting us, waiting for the police that are overtaxed to get to us. Okay, so every day you're knocking on the door. Yes. 1,700 doors, a lot of doors. <laughs> <laughs> it's, been, it's been a hustle. <laughs> uh, so when you get to District 35, medical freedom, and uh, can you tell us a little bit about that question when you ask the people how is important for them medical freedom? What kind of feedbacks are you getting from them? And you also said that all even on both sides of the party, current elected officials, they said some of the people, some of the feedbacks, they said in 25 years, never ever somebody knock on the door. Yes. And you were the first one. Can you tell us about medical freedom, how it's important for them in District 35? So medical freedom is is important in every district, to tell okay. you the truth. Okay. Um, I survived a quadruple bypass last okay. year. I was two weeks on a ventilator. I was a couple weeks in the hospital. Oh. And when you talk about your medical freedom being taken away from you the last two years and how the government has left individuals by themselves in hospitals, uh, I would have gone to prison if my five-year-old would have been in the hospital and I couldn't go in and protect him. We know that there are situations where hospitals are overtaxed and that the, the staff is tired mm -hmm. and they make mistakes. Mm -hmm. You know, when I have my knee surgeries, they write right wrong on the leg how many times? And these things can go wrong so quickly when you don't have your advocate in there protecting you. Mm -hmm. In medical freedom, we need to protect our, our, our family members. The patient bill of rights, still you can take the advocate away if the hospital decides that there's another pandemic. And that's unacceptable. You know, when I was on that ventilator, I had these horrific nightmares and dreams, but the one thing that was consistent uh, I didn't know when they woke me up and this and that because you're, you're, they wake you up occasionally yeah. while you're on the sedation. Dysfunction. And I remember always asking for my wife. You know, it's, wow. Yeah, that's emotional. <laughs> it is. It's been a year and I still, yeah, yeah. when I get emotional like this, yeah. it, I, it brings it back hard. Nice. And, you know, I, I remember screaming in my head. Where's my wife? Tell me where my wife yeah, is. Yeah. Even though she was there. Yeah. You know, and you're tied down. You're 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 locked down on the thing because they don't want you pulling out the the ventilator. Mm -hmm. You don't know what it is. Yeah. You know you can't Subconscious. talk. Subconscious. Yeah, and you can't talk when you do wake up. Yeah. So yeah, you just was, see with your eyes. Yeah. You are a family is, man. You are yeah. a family man. I love that. You are a family man. I really it, appreciate. It was it was a tough time. Yes, it is. These are things that I want to fight to stop. Yeah. We and cannot do this to the American people ever again. And you are becoming unstoppable. <laughs> yeah. I'm working it. You make me cry too, oh, man. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, this, this is all what the show is about. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's emotional touch showing everything this, comes from the heart. This is why I'm running. I this love This is it. why I have to work as hard as I can to fix this. And, and working and out there knocking on $1,700 nice. doors, 
this is what I'm showing the people how hard I'm going to work when I get to Tallahassee. Nice. I love it. I love it. That's why we would love to give you an opportunity to share as much as and we can. And I appreciate can. it. And religious liberty has been violated or not. How is that important? Oh, man. <laughs> How is that you important? Know? District 35. I've been touching District 35 because that's where you're running. Yes. Every other district is important. Yes. I want to focus on your district. Yes. Did you saw that a lot of liberties, rights he's been taking away from the people? So when I'm talking to people, and you know, you have your strong religious convictions, and, and I've gotten in some seriously deep conversations with people about how much they love their, their personal religious beliefs. And they've ha people have had to compromise, and they've had to, to get these mandates forced on them because they were afraid and like myself, I've got three kids under the age of nine. I was looking at trailers in the middle of nowhere, trying to find a property, maybe that I could uh, do an aquaponics, grow mm -hmm. chickens, and, yeah. and, and live off the land Farming. in a way that I could, because if I didn't have a job, yeah. because these mandates forced me out of a job because of my medical condition, I was, I was not going to be able to survive with my kids. Mm -hmm. Well, people have gone and they've taken the shot when they didn't want to. And that is a violation of their civil rights and their Title VII. We have laws in place already to protect people. And this government has allowed these, ru these rules and laws to be pushed aside. Title, Title VII and the Civil Rights Act, and I'm sorry, in 1964, people fought hard well, to get those, those civil like, rights yeah. enacted. And we we're pushing them to the side. And to, to hear people tell me how upset they are that they they went ahead and they did it and they 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 had to protect their family that's your only choice you have to protect yeah. your family and uh, you know we pray together when we're at the door mm -hmm. and we hope that nothing happens to them adversely but this uh this experimental drug is not proven yeah so it, it's just it's sad yeah and the people the people speak to me about it and i i just my heart goes out to them because they've done everything they can do for their family, but to, to have to put your, your job before your family yeah. and not knowing how to protect your family that's, and the government takes that away. It's, it's not good. Not, it's good. not good. So I believe every constituency, every elected official, either they're elected or now running or seeking for an office, I believe it should be a requirement that, that we have to at least knock 2,000 doors. I believe, but you know, like you said, if you are afraid and anxiety, you have to talk to people, then right. how are you going to represent the people in your own district? Exactly. And my other point, constituents, and uh, there's many of them on the other side, even mm -hmm. on your party. Why should District 35 vote for you compared to other or other well qualified? Why do you are different than they are? Well, it starts with how I got involved uh, in the activism portion of this. Mm -hmm that I went and I called both sides. Okay. Because, you know, as a, as a constituent myself mm -hmm. right now, mm -hmm. I believe that these parties should be working together yes. when there is a, a, a situation where people are gonna lose their jobs. Yeah. This was, this was a partisan issue. Yeah. It was very simple. So I also have the, the ability uh, as a flight attendant that we, we put our schedules out and it's based on seniority. Mm -hmm. But once you get your schedule, mm -hmm. if you wanna move around and do this, I take the most junior guys shift because I need to move to those da those yes. days. It's simple like that. You can you easily work, accommodate it. Yeah. You know, not every time you're going to be able to come to a, a solution, mm -hmm. but you've got to be open with talking to the people. Yeah. Um, even on the plane, when mm -hmm. when I'm out there, 95% of the time I'm an amazing flight attendant. I have that one time where I've got to take it back to the galley. Yeah. I've got to. Yeah. And I've got a release, and then I go back out there, and I retalk with the yes. people again. That's what I'm going to bring to the politics. Nice. We're not going to. We're we're going to have situations where me and a, a someone from the other side disagree. I need to step back. Nice. Go have a glass of water. Come back, and let's reevaluate. Re nice. So now I'm, my last question, putting you in a hot spot. Okay. <laughs> So I'm not living in District 35, but let's pretend I, I do okay. for a moment. And everybody, 190,000 plus people who live in district. So you look it up in camera and said, my name is such and such. And why should you guys vote for me? 
right. And this is your time. Look it up in camera and tell them why should they vote for you and what are you going to do for them while you're working and guy, ele guy elected in the, in the House. Okay. Well, my name's Ken Davenport, and I am running for district representative of 35 for the um, Florida House. I am going to get out there, and I'm going to work hard. I'm starting out now by going door to door, grassroots, getting to know the people that are in my area. What I'm going to do after the fact is I'm going to be available all the time. Uh, it's, it's, you're going to have a phone number to be able to call me and talk with me, and we're going to get back to you. We're never going to have a situation like I had where that phone call does not get answered. I, uh, I've been in Florida all my life. I was born in Rockledge. Uh, I have connections here in Orlando that I've lived here for 24 years. I moved into my current house right before 9-11. I actually listened to 9-11 while on the radio because I did not have TV in my home at that time. I have stability and I've been with my wife. Uh, next year when I'm elected will be our 25th year anniversary. We've been together 28 years. I have three wonderful kids, two dogs, four cats, and two fish. So I'm the average guy that is next door that is finally not going to sit there and talk about it anymore. I'm standing up. I'm coming out and I'm going to stand up for you. And if there's anything that I'm not doing, you guys need to let me know because I will, I will get it done. And that's, that's why you should vote for me. My name is Ken Davenport. I'm running for District 35 State, State House Representative. Please go to votedavenport.com. Help me out with any donations or any volunteer work. We are a grassroots um, organization. We do not have a lot of funding, so any donation as small as possible or any help with uh, door knocking and volunteer work would be greatly appreciated. Thank you very much. God bless you, and thank you. Thank you, guys. This is the, this is the Iggy host and our special episode 38. Please, District 35, yes, sir. please. Vote for this guy. He's a family man, religious man. He's willing to vote for you over there. Yep. And we really do appreciate you coming to our show. We'll post all of this information. Share, like, anything that we can help you out down there, reach more audience. We'll, we'll constantly will do it. But once again, your story was inspirable, and that's all was about it. And thank you so much. We wish you a good luck. Yes. We'll stay in touch with you. Please. So thank you so much. Please love, share. This is the Rim Podcast. We bring the guest each and every week to educate you so you have a better decision. Right. Thank you.